You got the call. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the call-up presented by Triple Play Fantasy. D-Mendy, joined by my brother from another mother, the baby to the Huey, baby Huey, Michael Richards in the house. How's it going, friend? Going good, man. Uh, Glad to be here talking more prospects with you this week. And, uh, you know, we're without our other co-hosts, but we're still going to grind this one out and give you guys some good content this week and uh, help you out with your uh, fantasy leagues. That's right. We made a pact, the four of us. We said no matter rain nor shine, no co-hosts, no hosts, whoever is available, we're going to make sure every single week that we give you guys all the prospect goodness that you can handle. And regardless of how in-depth we go, guys that are in AAA, single A, rookie ball, whatever it is, there's guys that we're always watching, as the case is this week with, of course, our beginning segment, our Minor League Players of the Week. Kicking it off with Matt Caterino, who for the Minnesota Twins, my favorite team, right-handed pitcher in that organization. He's only played one game over the last week, four innings, two hits, zero walks, six strikeouts. It's actually been an entire month since he last allowed a run. And he's looked really good this year. In 2022 in double-A ball for the Twins, over 12 strikeouts per nine. The walks are a little bit high. He's actually walking almost five per nine, so that needs to go down a little bit. No home runs allowed this season. And a uh, just overall, very interesting profile. one three one ERA, but the you know the FIP of a 287, or I'm sorry, 281 is not too bad. And he's somebody, again, the Twins need pitching. I could see him easily rising up through that organization as he keeps demonstrating all the great stuff he has. A fastball that averages 95 miles per hour, a four-pitch mix that he has, you know, with a a low 80s curve, a great hard slider, and a changeup. I do think, I don't know if all four pitches are going to play at the next level, but I do think that he does have at least the two or three that I think are solid. And uh, a very promising player in their organization, to say the least. Yeah, uh, Matt Cantorino last year is, is someone that caught my eye just for the filthiness of his pitches. And uh, I do think he has this the the pitches to be a starter long term. It's the command. I would actually give him a comparison of someone like Matt Brash last year, like that sort of uh, filthy stuff. But you don't really know if it's going to work in in a five or six innings yet. But uh, he's someone I'm, I'm pretty high on. And I do think he's going to be a, a big time arm for them in some role down the line. Yeah. The twins have some very interesting arms in that organization. Obviously you've seen Josh Winder up there right now, kind of making some headlines there. They also have Jordan Balazovich in there as well. And, uh, Simeon Woods Richardson also has been on this show a couple times featured here. So a lot of interesting arms in the twins organization, Mike Kyle Harrison caught your eye for the giants and man, those numbers are mighty promising. Yeah, Kyle Harrison, uh, as you see there, he's he's got a for the week he or for the last ten days nine innings pitch four hits zero earned four walks nineteen Ks. Uh, the season he's caught my eye obviously with the twenty four innings pitched, one eight eight ERA in one WHIP, fifty two percent strikeout rate, which is absurd. One forty three xFIP. I actually pulled up a leaderboard of xFIP leaders in. He's nearly a full run ahead of every other pitcher in the minor leagues. So Kyle Harrison is someone I'm very high on at this point. Uh, when I look at everything combined, I already see him as like a top 50 prospect overall. And he's someone that I'm, I'd am i definitely be targeting in dynasty leagues and, and someone I expect to see you know on, on the top 10 and moving upwards from there up for overall starting pitchers prospects. He's averaging an insane... 19.13 K per night. I don't think I've ever seen a number that high for a starting pitcher, uh, Mike. That's 
absolutely just insane. And that his numbers are still with a 371 Babbitt too this season. His 188 ERA, 161 FIP, 139 X FIP. I mean, I can see why you like him so much. And, and the fact that he's in right now in single A, this might be the time where if any type of dynasty league where for some reason he's not owned or if you're able to get a jump, this is the type of player you can jump on early. And and baby Huey brought that dice to you right here, right now. Player of that magnitude, top 50 player in his eyes. Do you have any pro comp for him or is there anything about him that you can compare to something else of a pitcher that's in the big leagues? That's something I need to get better at is comparing different pitchers, but just a, a lefty, a, a big lefty, a big durable lefty who strikes out a lot of hitters, whoever, I mean, those are rare in themselves. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, like I see him being like, I, I can only think of pitching prospects, but a little less command than Nick Lodolo, but more strikeouts. Like he's going to be a top of the rotation uh, starter, like a uh, number one starter. Oh man, I'm, I, I'm about to jump out of my pants. I'm excited for Kyle Harrison. He's, he seems like the real deal. Another player uh, that seems like he's being the real deal right now uh, Mr. Perez here, shortstop for the Detroit Tigers here, Wensel Perez, the past week, a 400, 381, 700 slash line, one home run, three RBIs, three doubles. On the season, a 277, 352, 563 line, six home runs, 20 RBIs, and he's got a nearly an 11% walk rate. On the season, it's been very interesting just to, to look at his numbers in general. He's got a sub 20% K rate. Uh, a pretty good 276 ISO, 267 batting average, like we talked about for a 142 WRC plus. He seems like he's got a lot of tools. Uh, he is, you know, range, hands. He's got enough arm to play shortstop at the big leagues. He's got plus grades for his speed as he stole 21 bases back in 2019. A ton of athleticism. Obviously, he's with the Tigers, so Javi Baez is blocking him right now. Uh, but I would think by the time he eventually would be ready to call it up with, uh, you know, with him being in a plus ball right now, you would think it's still at least two years away. I would expect that that probably won't be an issue for when he's ready to get called up, but he does need to work on his power right now. He's kind of a slap hitter that gets um, not enough power in his profile. that I think people are going to uh, want in fantasy or, or people aren't excited about. He's great as a, a 40 power on fan graphs and I, I think he does have the potential to be a, a fixture in this Tigers offense and be a kind of do it all type of player, Mr. Perez here. Yeah, I will I will throw in uh the two seventy six ISO is a drastic increase from any other level during his career here. So, you know, with an above average hit tool and plus speed, if he is tapping into more power as a middle infielder, um, a switch hitter as well. This is definitely a player to keep an eye on. I'm not super high on uh, Tigers hitting prospects necessarily for fantasy, but uh, he's he's had a good season. He's definitely on the radar. I feel the same way about their pitching prospects because they have not translated. Scoople is kind of trying to turn the corner this season. But um, in general, I mean, this is kind of a side conversation for a second, Mike, but when was the last, I mean, maybe I'm blanking on somebody. When was the last prospect they've had that legit has been just a superstar because I mean, Spencer Torkelson obviously starting the year with them this year has looked overmatched and very early on in his career. So we shouldn't worry about that yet, but we saw Matt Manning, Casey Mize, Tariq Skubal all come in as f pitchers of the future for this organization. And they're all been just met in their big league careers. Is there something going on with their minor league development? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, for me, the reason I'm, the reason I'm not as high on them, from the hitting prospect is their park. They just haven't, they, there's a track record. They just haven't really, like you said, they haven't been developing these hitters. The last major hitter that was young in their, in their system is Miguel Cabrera and they got him in a trade. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that was what, 20 years ago. So it's like, I mean, I'm high on Riley green. I think he's going to be good if he hadn't gotten injured, uh, but he's still young. I mean, it's just an overall feel of the system. Uh, I mean, they're definitely developing some young talent they did they didn't used to in recent years, but they're, but they're not coming up in in performing like other young players in different organizations. So it's hard to get super excited about a Tigers prospect right now, regard on either side of the ball. I was trying to think back. Was I was going to say Maglio Ordonez, but he started with the White Sox. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll have to, this is where we could have had used Christian on this show. He could have told us the last one that they developed from their minor league, like from the start they, that they drafted. Um, yeah, Akil Badu last year was a Rule 5 pick. You know, but the Twins they, yeah, the twins drafted him. Yeah, so like that's what I'm saying. I can't think of, there, there might be some guy, but it, it, when's the last time the Tigers have had a superstar? I'm like, now this is very interesting. This is going down a rabbit hole. I mean, uh, anybody that, obviously we're going to look this up after the show, but if, if you're watching this right now, uh, comment below if you can think of a Tigers prospect that they've developed, drafted, developed, and has become a superstar because baby Huey and I are stumped. We, we can't think of a single one they didn't get via trade. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I'll, Christian will help us out with that next week. But uh, somebody that is going to be a superstar. It looks very much like it. Corbin Carroll of the Arizona Diamondbacks. We talked about, I think, on the last show, how many, I think he hit four home runs over a two-day period. Just absolutely on fire. Just another great prospect in this up-and-coming uh, farm system over in Arizona. Absolutely. And anyone who's been following me for a little while knows I'm a, I've been a Corbin Carroll fan for a long time. I was devastated when he got hurt last year. He was showing exactly what he's showing right now at the beginning of last year, too. So uh, as far as a fantasy prospects go, there aren't many players with a 70 grade hit and 70 grade speed. And like a lot, that's my favorite profile in fantasy, the, the big hit, big speed guys who can develop power. And Carroll is showing that he's tapping into that power right now. You know, he's got 11 home runs already, 17.2 walk percentage. Uh, I mean, he just he's a he's a fantasy superstar in my mind, uh, and someone that I would aggressively target in dynasty leagues. Uh, I think he's going to be a future first round pick in redraft leagues. Corbin Carroll or Alec Thomas, if you had to pick one for dynasty, I'm picking Corbin Carroll. Interesting. Okay. I, I respect it. I mean, Alec Thomas right now, obviously with the big league club and I believe he does he only have one home run with the, uh, with diamondbacks. I mean, somebody that uh, Corbin Carroll is basically stepping up eventually to take his place in triple a, what he was doing. Uh, but yeah, very much looked just like the superstar prospect that Mike's been talking about. Let's go to now some notable promotions and, Unfortunately, it was not like last week. Last week was like Christmas. This is like after once it's New Year's is over and you're kind of in the bad part of January and there's not much else there. Uh, just a couple guys. Chase Silseth with the Los Angeles Angels was called up. Luis Diaz of the Miami Marlins was called up. Also, a couple guys that Baby Huey added just before the show that didn't make the graphic. Ryan, Pe is it Pepiet? Pepiet, I think is how you say his last name. And I'm uh, gonna agree with that Pepio. I've been doing it without. I think, it's Pe I think you're right. It's Pepio. Um, and then uh, Brian Bello with Boston was bumped up to AAA. But Ryan Pepio had actually just pitched the other day with the Dodgers. Three innings with them. I believe not horrible. I, I don't have his line in front of me. But I think it was a, a pretty decent debut for him. Yeah, it was, th it was three innings, zero hits, five walks, three strikeouts. So, so I was going to say the walks. Up. Yeah. Yep. He's going to be one of those guys, those electric arms, multi-inning type guys who who will have command issues but will strike people out and hard to hit. Yeah. So I mean, those type of guys are always exciting to watch. Obviously, they are uh, can be very stressful if you have them on your fantasy team at certain times too. But yeah. uh, but obviously, some very interesting names here. And I believe did Silseth also get a um, get a start with the. Angels, if I'm not mistaken, as well. I'm going to look that up right now. He did. Uh, he got six innings, I believe. Uh, very impressive because I mean, he's someone that just came on my radar in the last couple of weeks. I mean, he's a draft pick from 2021. 21-year-old skipped AAA and just got thrown right into the fire and held his own. Uh, he's, he's definitely a big riser right now in, in the on the pitching side of things. I, I do want to mention... Uh, about Brian, I, I believe it's actually pronounced Brian Bayo. The L's are pronounced as Y's, mm -hmm. and he's he's someone I'm. He's one of my biggest risers on the pitching side this year. He, uh, he's basically he's got the potential for three plus pitches, and I've watched him pitch a, a few times. His command's actually better than it's listed on his scouting grades. So we're we're talking about a guy with the potential for three plus pitches. 
who's who's been effective uh, at every level throughout his time and he's about to turn 23 but he's but he's right up, knocking on the door he's the top pitching prospect in the Red Sox organization so again another guy that I'd be uh, scooping up uh, or or trying to trade for if he's already on the roster well he's in triple a right now do you think by the end of the season he could even get called to be in the bullpen yep i do i think they could use him like in a multi inning role type role just get his feet wet uh, with with the thought that he's going to be in the rotation next season. Yeah, I mean, especially because they're right now using Garrett Whitlock as a starter, and they're really missing that, what he provided, kind of that the multi-inning bull crawl at the back end of the bullpen. So that sounds like a perfect replacement for that right there. Um, I, I will bring up with one thing with Silseth, 98, fastball touch 98 in his start. Sinker and slider helped get eight ground outs. 81 pitches, had only one runner reach second base, four strikeouts, two walks. Yeah, like you said, 11th round pick looked really impressive. So obviously he'll be making another start, I would expect. I don't think he was sent back down. So uh, Seth, uh, Seth, just keep an eye on him. If you need a pitcher, see what he does again in his next start. Prospect watch. A couple guys there caught our eye here. Noah Cameron in the Kansas City Royals organization. He's in single A ball right now. He's actually averaging over 12 Ks per nine. Six games started on the season, 24 innings pitched to 3.75 ERA, 3.46 FIP. And somebody that if you were to like dig around for him, it's not going to come up on any top prospect lists. Uh, MLB.com doesn't even have him as a top 30 prospect for the Royals. But this is, again, like we talk about on this show, we're trying to bring you guys sometimes that aren't talked about so you can get a jump on their names early. So as they start developing through the system and more people are aware of them, you might already have access and exposure to these players uh, before they become household names here. Noah Cameron, uh, 0.93 home runs per nine. He's got like a, you know, the ER metrics seem like it checks out. And he seems somebody that, again, the strikeout stuff seems solid. The walks aren't too bad. And, uh, you know, he did tear his UCL in August of 2021. And so obviously that kind of, I think, played it part of him being in the seventh round in the 2021 draft. But a 6'3", a 6'3", gets fastball up to 94 miles an hour, got an above average change up. And I think he could be a useful piece down the road. I don't think he's going to necessarily be a front end rotation arm, but he seems like he could be a serviceable pitcher for the Royals. Yeah, absolutely. He's another name I'm not super familiar with, but he was a seventh round pick in the 2021 draft, a six foot three lefty. So he's he's in an advanced college arm. I, I'm not surprised he's uh, doing well in low A. I'd like I'd like to see how he does as he moves up. But if he can handle the higher level pitching, he could be a, a fast riser through the system as well. Yeah, and, and it's noted too that his curveball, which is his third pitch, right now has a little bit more loop to it than like a tight break. So uh, that could be a problem potentially in the big leagues because those loopier pitches could potentially hang and you want that snap, that break on that pitch for them to be able to swing over top of those pitches. So just again, he's in single A, so there's obviously a lot of time between then and now for him to be able to work on that. But um, just a name for you to get to know there, Noah Cameron. And you know it would not be this show without baby Huey getting a Seattle Mariner talked about here with Mr. Edwin Arroyo. Yes, Edwin Arroyo. So he's a name who's popped up on my radar doing my, I guess, filters that I do for looking through different prospects. Uh, when I look at 18-year-olds in A-ball, he's he's a standout there. Uh, uh, is, there's only one other player, Jackson Chirio from Milwaukee, that's even in the same class, and he has he's had significantly less playing time. So uh, basically on the season, I'm trying to find the stats here. He's Oh, he's got a 10%. 10 percent walk rate under 20 percent k rate you know hitting 289 379 512 so nearly 900 ops he's got the over 200 iso he's got a good speed grade uh 135 wrc plus and he in when he got drafted in the second round he he had kind of he was kind of viewed as like a average across the board type skills but what i'm seeing here just from his early performance and just the age versus level stuff is that I think those things are going to be raised in the future in, in the coming weeks and months or, you know, going into next year at least. And this is a player that I think will be a riser on dynasty lists and uh, in the organization itself. Anytime there's a young shortstop with well-rounded skills excelling while he's young for the level, I want to get in on that early.
Well, I would think if uh, I think that uh, his projected timeline, people were waiting. Mike, I, I think I was muted. <laughs> what do you think the projected timeline for our buddy here, Edwin Arroyo, would be? Oh well, uh, that's that's difficult to say. I mean, this is more of a long term player, twenty twenty five type of type of player. Like if he moves quickly, I mean that could, that would be a, an elite prospect debuting at twenty one. So twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six. He's more of a guy that I'm buying now just to to get the catch the rise that he's going to go on lists, and then people will be interested in him as a sell piece. But like that's how I use prospects in in dynasty leagues. But as far as his long-term potential, it, I, I expect him to be a starter for the Mariners down the road or starting level player. Yeah, I mean, he very much like we showed there before, looks the part. Uh, just another, I mean, Seattle just keeps pumping out all these incredible prospects. It's actually kind of it, crazy the amount of talent that they've developed there and just drafted so well. Uh, but we got to get to the last part here, Mike, and that's our who's next. Who could be ready for the call up? Guy that's on, <laughs> I think, been on every show besides one this week. We're ready. We're ready for you, Max Meyer. There's an injury to Jesus Lazardo. So the opening spot question mark, well, they gave it to Cody Petit, at least for this rotation. People are speculating out there that they're waiting for a longer term injury before they give him a spot. Right now, from what I'm hearing, is it's they expect Jesus Lazardo to be on the 15 day IL, but it just be for the minimum 15 days and he'll be back. So that's why I'm guessing he didn't get the call. But I mean, there's no denying Max Meyer, 297 ERA this year, 43 strikeouts and 36.1 innings pitched. I mean, opposing batters and this year are hitting 187 off of him. He's got a 0.96 whip. I mean, just if you want a good number for stats, he has it. And I know like, uh, Recently, like he hasn't had like as dominant stuff as he did in the beginning of the year, but this is a guy that's ready. And, and I just think they're waiting for, you know, whether it's Alicia or Hernandez or Elias or Hernandez just doesn't perform like he hasn't been all season or an injury. I think he'll be up soon. Mike, you have to be getting frustrated with the Marlins that they're not just giving Max Meyer to us. Let us see him pitch. Yeah, especially with all the other teams, you know, the Reds bringing up Hunter Green and Lodolo, the Mariners bringing up Kirby and Brash. Like, uh, Meyer's one of those guys, you know, he's one of the top pitching prospects in the game, and his numbers indicate that he's ready to take the next challenge. Uh, so everything he said is true. I just think they don't want to mess with him as far as bringing him, moving him up and down, and they don't intend on putting him in the bullpen. So it's like whenever they see a rotation spot open up long term and he's ready, they'll put him in there. Like, I don't think he'll go back down to the minor leagues. So it's like they're just trying to time that correctly. Yeah. In his last start, um, he did have six earned runs, which was actually more earned runs than he had. The rest, he actually equaled the amount of earned runs he gave up in every one of his other starts combined. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six other starts uh, combined. So not his best start there. Obviously, that's why the ERA is up a little bit higher. But like I said, I, I, we both know he's ready. And like you said, I think, Mike, it's, it's just a timing issue. This next one, this next one is a little confusing to me. The Italian Breakfast, I think, is his nickname. Vinny Pasquantino, first baseman for the Royals, who they also have Nick Prado there. Two guys that you would have thought would have taken the spot for Carlos Santana when he went down, but like the numbers show, he's ready to be called up. I'm confused again why he has not gotten the call. Yeah, uh, he's someone that caught my eye last year, and and I was a doubter originally, but. Uh, it's it's hard to doubt him at this point. Uh, he doesn't have the traditional like young upside type of thing going on, but he's got a hit tool. He's developing power, and uh, like like you see with the numbers there, he's hit some more home runs this week. Uh, One forty one WRC plus, more walks than strikeouts. Three seventy one OBP. Uh, I mean, I think he's going to be more valuable in OBP leagues than average leagues, but uh, still a really good prospect. And yeah, it's just. I think they gave MJ, MJ Melendez the opportunity first. Uh, not exactly sure why, because uh, Pasquantino was out producing him, but uh, it's really just them looking for a spot to, uh, in the Carlos Santana. I'm not sure why he's still there. Uh, I mean, I was looking at it earlier. It's going to take a Carlos Santana trade or injury, you know, Salvador Perez, possibly a Hunter Dozier or something like that, but 
those those are the three openings for him to get into the lineup. And he again, he's another player that I don't think they want to bring him up and sit him on the bench, play him two times a week. So it's kind of like they're just looking for the next spot. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, you have to see other guys get hurt for them to get a shot. I mean, like you sh- you showed the numbers there. 246 average obviously isn't the best, but a 368 OBP. He's walking more than striking out, which to me is a huge thing in AAA to see those that type of plate discipline. The 141 WRC plus three stolen bases to boot too. Like Vinny Pasquantino, man. I mean, he'll be someone that goes, I'm sure, for a good chunk of fab when he does get the call in for fantasy baseball. But uh, if you had to right now pick who has a better pro career between Nick Prado and Vinny Pasquantino, who would you pick? Last year, I would have said Prado. This now I'm on Pasquantino. I think the plate discipline and the approach uh, is just a different different level. Prado's going to have strikeout concerns. He has more power. Pasquantino's a rare, a rare kind of guy who's going to have a bunch of walks, really high OBP, and still get you twenty plus home runs as well. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the plate discipline, the power, all that stuff's very intriguing for any fantasy player in the Royals. I'm sure are going to be very much happy to have somebody like that in their lineup for years to come when it does happen. Uh, But that's going to wrap us up this week, baby Huey, me and you, we did the thing. We, uh, we brought it to the people, the dynamic duo here. Anything you would like to plug to the audience before we wrap this one up? Uh, No, I guess uh, you got about six or seven baby Huey references in this episode. So that's good. Uh, as far I'm getting as, better. I'm getting better with it. Yeah, and uh, from there, I, I guess just keep keep an eye out for uh, both of our uh, work coming up. Like, our, I'm sure you got some uh, two start pitchers coming up in article, and I have a, a a while ago I did some missing link stuff, like uh, players who have two of the three tools, and I'm going to go back and and see if any of them have improved in those areas. So that's the next article. I think people will enjoy that one. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, a ton of great stuff. All this usually comes out, all our articles on Fantrax HQ, and then uh, I have one that goes out on Fantasy Pros. But regardless of all that, like we said, every single week we will be here with you guys, even if it's just two com- two amigos here. We're going to do the thing and uh, bring it to you guys. So if you enjoy the content, please make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave us a comment below any prospects that have caught your eye that you would like us to talk about in future shows. And if you're listening to the podcast, please make sure you're subscribed there and then leave us five-star rating and review. All that stuff helps us get seen by more people does us good around these parts. So for baby Huey, I'm D Mendy. We'll catch y'all in the next one.